Hey, my name's Ian, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be making this awesome pair of bookshelf speakers. These speakers are inspired by the B&W Nautilus. If you haven't heard of the B&W Nautilus, they're a somewhat infamous speaker that carries a hefty price tag and a long lead time. Currently, to buy them direct from B&W in Canada, you'd have to pay in excess of $115,000, and rumor has it, the wait list right now is about two years. The Nautilus is a somewhat infamous speaker mostly because of its unique design, but also because it carries some interesting acoustic properties. Now, I'm no audiophile, so I'm not gonna go into those details on this video, but I do find it really interesting, and I'll share some links with you in the description. There are some designs available on Thingiverse for a Nautilus-inspired speaker already, but for this video, I wanted to start from scratch and create my own custom design for my desk. So this video is gonna be somewhat of a tutorial, just taking you through my design process. If you are gonna build along, here's the parts you'll need. You'll need two Dayton Audio PS95 full range audio drivers. You'll need one mini amplifier. So I use the Knob Sound mini amp from Amazon. You need four speaker posts. So you can get these online, but you can also buy them from a local electronics store if you have one. Uh, you'll need some speaker wire. So for the internal routing of the speakers, you'll need about 20 inches, so 10 inches per speaker and then you'll need uh, speaker wire to run externally from the speaker to the amp. So whatever length that is for your setup, double it. You'll also need some M3 heat inserts and some M3 screws. You'll need about a kilogram of PLA. You'll need a soldering iron. And if you have one of those heat insert setters, then great. I don't have one, but if you do, you should use it. And finally, you'll need a 3D printer or a friend or someone you can beg to use their 3D printer. All right, with the game plan set, let's jump into Blender and we'll start the design process. Okay, so here we are in Blender. This is by no means going to be a comprehensive tutorial. I just want to give you enough so that you can follow along. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I'll try and answer them. So first go to Edit Preferences and then under Add-ons, enable Add Curve Extra Objects and Add Mesh Extra Objects. They should be installed by default. Next, you want to go to Add Curve, Curve Spirals and then choose Logarithmic. You'll need to change the expansion force to 1.618, which is the golden ratio. And you should end up with something that looks like a Fibonacci curve. I then duplicated and offset the spiral by 180 degrees to get these two curves you see. And then I solidified them using a bevel depth of 10. From here, I tweaked the mesh a little bit further, adding a taper, as you can see. I originally was planning on adding a second tweeter or another speaker on the internal spiral, but I scrapped that idea. And eventually, after playing around with the design for a few hours, I ended up with something I quite liked, so I decided to print it. Okay, so this is the first prototype. I printed uh, a couple of others. Once I had modeled the bolt holes, I printed a couple of these out. Um, and then the final decision to make is I had originally modeled this with the idea that it would sit sideways. This was going to be a foot here and then I would get a little foot for this side, and then there's a little flat spot that I put on the back, and the idea was that it would sort of sit like that. I think I might prefer this. If I printed this and then the mirror image of this, so this little spiral bit was going out the left-hand side, I think that would be a pretty cool pair. I think that's what I'll do. I'll add a couple of supports, a couple of feet on the bottom, um, and then, yeah, let's run off a large version and see how it, uh, see how it prints. Okay guys, here we go. So here is the large version. Uh, let's take this off here and have a quick look. I'll use metal spikes rather than these 3D printed feet, but I just wanted to print something so that I could, I could stand it up. So that's what they are. And then, okay, let's get rid of the supports. Cool. All right, and then let's try this. First time, doesn't always happen that. There's a little bit of uh, support material I can see inside those bolt holes, but that's okay. This is really cool, actually. I'm super happy with how this has turned out. And then there'll be another one. I think this will probably the, be the right. I think I'll have the tail on the outside and then there'll be a mirror image of this here. So let's get that printed. Okay, so the parts uh, have arrived. So this is the amplifier, Bluetooth wireless amp. Uh, amp. It's got some uh, banana plugs in the front. You can take aux or 
USB input here. Fairly inexpensive, I think this was about 50 Canadian. Um, comes with a power supply. I also picked up these um, speaker jacks. So these are to go through the extent of the housing that we're 3D printing. I also picked up some speaker wire. So this is for the internals. Um, and, and I'm actually going to use this for the um, external connection as well. This, these jacks can take either those banana plugs or they actually have a little hole in there in the post. So you can put bare wire through them as well. And then also what has arrived are the two drivers. Um, so let's, let's crack these open. Okay, so these are the Dayton Audio PS95 8s, three and a half inch full range drivers. These were very well reviewed online. Okay, here we go. Quite a nice uh, looking speaker actually. Nice little uh, cone in the middle. Doesn't come with any screws by the looks of things, so we'll have to figure out uh, what screws to get for these uh, mounting holes. All right, let me get all this out of the way and let's do a quick test fit. So this is the moment of truth. Oh, 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 look at that. Perfect. And those little holes seem to line up nicely. The other thing I want to test actually is with the weight of the speaker there, do these feet do their job? Does the whole thing rock forwards now? So this hopefully will not rock backwards. Perfect. So I did go back to the shop. Um, yesterday I was at, at the uh, the electronic store and I bought audio jack post, but I actually, I, I was there just yesterday and I went back today and they don't have any more of these and I want them to match. So I had to go for a slightly different variant, um, which they did have the two sets of for me. So I now got, this one's disassembled, but I've now got um, two sets of these. These are kind of old school looking uh, audio jacks, but it's got the same, uh, if you can see that, if I can focus. Yeah, it has the same little connection point here for soldering the, the wire onto. So inside the speaker, let's, let's lay this all out. We have inside the speaker housing, obviously we've got the driver. The driver is going to be connected with, uh, with wire. So it'll be soldered um, at the driver end and it will be soldered at the jack end. So the, uh, it'll be soldered either end here. And then we have our amp. And between these jacks and the amp, we have more cable. These jacks, um, you can use spade bits um, with these spade connectors on. So I'm going to use these on the jacks here. And then on this end, rather than buy, these uh, spade connectors weren't that cheap at the store I was at. So I'm just going to do a bare wire connection. So these posts have little holes inside them, you can see there. So you can just pass the cable, uh, the wire through those posts and then secure it down and that will give you your connection. So I'll do that on the, the mini amp end. And then this is all internal to the speaker. So this, the uh, driver obviously goes on the front um, and the, this wire here will be internal to the speaker uh, and we'll connect to the, the back of these jacks. Okay, here I'm just measuring up the wire. So we wanna get to these jacks there. It's about nine inches. We'll go for about 10 inches of wire here. I actually don't own wire strippers, so I'm going to need to improvise. That's probably enough on that end. So you don't need that much off the end here. All right, so we have our stripped wire our ends here. Um, so let's get them soldered up onto here. Here I am doing my best impression of soldering. When I was doing this project, it was actually before I moved to uh, to my new place. So this was in my old workshop and it was actually inside a, a closet. So I had very poor ventilation and I'm sure I took a couple of years off my life doing this. Once I'd soldered to the driver end, I then stripped the wire on the other end and then soldered to the post. Here I am using a pretty sketchy setup with a 3D printed clamp that I had 3D printed just for this purpose. I then took everything outside and started to give it a sand. I actually uh, don't have it on screen right now, but I had a bucket of water that I dunked this thing into in a minute. Uh, I was using water just to try and cut down on the amount of plastic particles that I was breathing in. 
And then I got onto painting. So here I am using some Rust-Oleum multicolored texture paint and I was using some Rust-Oleum gray primer uh, as a base coat. I actually recorded this last summer and I remember it being a million degrees here in BC so I kept having to jump into this tiny bucket to cool off. Okay, here we are back on the workbench. So we have our finished painted enclosure here. Um, we have obviously the driver. I have these heat inserts here, which uh, the driver gets connected to the enclosure with, with these M3 screws here. I have the spade connectors here, which connect the speaker to the amp. I have the uh, speaker posts, which uh, I need to mount to the enclosure. Uh, and I have the legs here, which have been painted um, and then I also have the polyfill. So this goes um, inside the, the enclosure um, and I'll talk more about that uh, in a minute. These four here, these are some M3 heat inserts uh, and they need to get sunk into these holes here on the enclosure. They also have a direction. So on these ones, you can see the internal edge of that is slightly beveled, whereas the other side is not. So this is the start where the start of the thread should be for your screw and this is the back. Just make sure you're putting it in the right way up, otherwise it might be a bit tougher to screw your finished part together. So, let's get started. Slow and steady here. And for temperature, I'm using 270 degrees. Now, what I like to do while the plastic is still a little bit soft, is come in here with a screw. Now, you can't screw this in too hard. You just want to come in here while it's a little bit soft and just make sure you are perfectly perpendicular in both uh, both axes and we are, we are, I think we're good. Okay, now the next thing to do is to uh, connect these posts to the back of the enclosure. So first we need to disassemble them. Okay, so let's bring this speaker over. So with this, there's a little trick you can do to figure out the polarity of your wires. If you have them backwards, you'll end up end up with a distorted sound. So the way to check is if you just watch the um, membrane here of the speaker, if you just take a AAA battery, if we just put one wire on one end of the battery and one on the other, so you can see the speaker is coming out towards the camera there. If we rotate it, the speaker goes backwards. What you're looking for is the speaker to, to be coming outwards. So this way. And when that's happening, the positive end of the battery is touching the positive terminal uh, of the speaker. So this is positive. Now, just to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna take a Sharpie. I'm just going to put a little bit of color on there. Okay, so now we know the the wire with the black line or the black uh, mark here is out positive. So, okay, let's uh, assemble. Okay, we're in. Ah, there we go. You can see the, uh, the brass down there glinting. Okay. So I'm just gonna put a bit of uh, rubberized glue just on the uh, the top of those posts just to make sure the nuts don't pack themselves off. I'll stuff it full of polyfill. I'll put the feet on and then uh, I think we're good to test. Because of the way this thing is constructed, I'm gonna need to push this, uh, push this all the way into the tail using a dowel. So I'm just gonna break this up into small pieces and start pushing this down in here. Okay, that should be good. 
That will leave a bit, a bit of space for the uh, back of the, uh, the driver here. Okay, so now we just need to mount the, or get the spade connectors set up on the uh, other end of the wire that's gonna connect to these posts here. So let's just do that now. Okay, here we go. So I've just crimped the uh, spade connectors onto the end of the cable here. So with that, let me hook up the right speaker. I'll connect the spades to the speakers themselves. And then I think we'll be ready to do a full test with both speakers. Okay, a couple of things before um, before I finish the assembly here. So the I was going to create a gasket. I actually was testing using uh, this flex glue to create um, some rubber gaskets just to seal up the speaker against the enclosure here. But I noticed um, just while assembling here that the speaker comes with a foam gasket just behind the driver. So we'll try that out. That will probably be more than sufficient to, um, to seal, this, seal this up. Okay, the moment of truth. There's music playing. Um, I'm just gonna turn the sound up. This is the first time I have heard these both together as well. So we'll listen to it together. Um, I'm excited. So I, I don't have a reference microphone or even really a good microphone. So I'm using this uh, this lav mic that I also use for all the, all the rest of my audio, but hopefully it can give you a, a decent idea of the sound of these things. They sound crisp. They sound really, really clear. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually listened to speakers or heard speakers that are so clear. Um, like the clarity on them is amazing. Um, a little bit weak on the bass. I think that's to be expected though, um, given their size. But um, if you supplement this with a subwoofer of any description, this would be, I think, a pretty uh, awesome sound system. So there you have it couple of 3D printed Nautilus inspired speakers. I added a 3D printed tailpiece that you can see there in some silk copper PLA I had lying around. I also picked up some brass spike feet with some brass pads to try and isolate the speaker. It's probably a little overkill for this size of speaker, but I think they look cool. A few improvements that I'd make to the design if I did it again would be, I'd improve the fit of the tailpiece because it does have a tendency to fall out occasionally and I try and get either matching black or brass screws and have them match with the feet and the tailpiece because I think that would help tie uh, it all together a little bit more. Um, I also think that there's an opportunity here to make a subwoofer in a similar style. Um, so maybe that should be my next project. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I'm super interested to hear any feedback you guys have. And if you have any questions about the design process, please do not hesitate to ask. Cheers and thanks for watching.